Aung San Suu Kyi is an unheroic hero by Ohida. Aung San Suu Kyi has virtually turned into a heroic unhero from an unheroic hero. It should remind us of two poems. One is by Robert Browning a patriot and the other is by Sir Walter Scott patriotism. If you are not patriotic, you should be damned. If you are a patriot, you must automatically be glorified by the people. Now the question is how long you will be admired. In A Patriot the poet has delineated this conception effectively, appropriately, precisely and colorfully. He was truly a patriot a year ago. Now a year afterwards, he has been damned eternally. And what about a great leader of Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, a Nobel laureate with many other distinctions? She was a patriot. She was a peacemaker. She was a scholar, and above, she had been under house arrest as if she was the Nelson Mandela of Myanmar. Since she could not stop the atrocities committed by the country's military against minority Rohingya Muslims, she was an unheroic hero. She should have been an iron lady like Margaret Thatcher. She should have been a strong leader like Hitler, Napoleon Bonaparte and so on. The former president Yajuddin Ahmed had invited the newly Nobel laureate Dr. Muhammad Yunus. He suggested to the president that people like a strong leader and urged him to lead the nation with a strong hand. Hillary Clinton said America believes in democracy. Gay rights and lesbian rights are also American rights. She also told America does not like to force the man to bring down the photo of Hazrat Muhammad, SM, from the website as it is his personal right or democracy or liberty. Similarly, Aung San Suu Kyi has not used her power to stop the atrocities. Unfortunately, she could not differentiate these two issues. Both of these are not identical. Rohingya issue has been much more severe as it violates even the rights to live. In other words, each and every person has the rights to live at least. That is why Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad said Myanmar's de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi was trying to defend the indefensible over alleged atrocities committed by the country's military against minority Rohingya Muslims. When he was asked on the sidelines of a speech he delivered in Singapore to comment on how Myanmar and Suu Kyi had been dealing with the Rohingya issue, he said, it would seem that Aung San Suu Kyi is trying to defend what is indefensible. They are actually oppressing these people to the point of killing them, mass killing. According to a UN report in August, the military crackdown with genocidal intent since 2017 drove hundreds of thousands of Rohingya Muslims from Rakhine State into neighboring Bangladesh though Myanmar has denied most of the allegations in the report. Here the helplessness of Suu Kyi can be perceived clearly as she told that the civilian government of Myanmar should not bear all responsibility for the crisis because the military retains a powerful political role under the constitution. According to a statement prepared for a regional summit, Southeast Asian nations will call for those responsible for atrocities in Myanmar's Rakhine state to be held fully accountable. Aung San Suu Kyi was born in 1945. She is a Burmese politician, diplomat, author, and Nobel Peace Prize laureate and the leader of the National League for Democracy. She is also the first woman to serve as Minister for Foreign Affairs, for the President's Office for electric power and energy, and for education. From 2012 to 2016 she was an MP for Kormu Township to the House of Representatives. After graduating from the University of Delhi in 1964 and the University of Oxford in 1968, she worked at the United Nations for three years. She married Michael Laras in 1972, with whom she had two children. Aung San Suu Kyi arose to prominence in the 1988 uprisings, and became the General Secretary of the National League for Democracy, NLD. Suu Kyi's mother, Kin Kyi, gained prominence as a political figure in the newly formed Burmese government. She was appointed Burmese ambassador to India and Nepal in 1960, 
and Aung San Suu Kyi followed her there. She studied in the Convent of Jesus and Mary School in New Delhi, and graduated from Lady Sri Ram College, a constituent college of the University of Delhi in New Delhi, with a degree in politics in 1964. Suu Kyi continued her education at St. Hugh's College, Oxford, obtaining a BA degree in philosophy, politics and economics in 1967 graduating with a third and MA degree in politics in 1968. Between 1985 and 1987, Aung San Suu Kyi was working toward an M.Phil. degree in Burmese literature as a research student at SOS, the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London. She was elected as an honorary fellow of St. Hughes in 1990. For two years, she was a fellow at the Indian Institute of Advanced Studies IIAS, in Shimla, India. She also worked for the government of the Union of Burma. Influenced by both Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of non-violence and more specifically by Buddhist concepts, Aung San Suu Kyi entered politics to work for democratization helped found the National League for Democracy on 27 September 1988, but was put under house arrest on 20 July 1989. She was offered freedom on the condition that she must leave the country. Here she behaved like a hero and refused the offer outright. Despite her philosophy of non-violence, a group of ex-military commanders and senior politicians who joined NLD during the crisis believed that she was too confrontational and that is why she left NLD. However, she retained enormous popularity and support among NLD youths, with whom she spent most of her time. During her time under house arrest, Aung San Suu Kyi devoted herself to Buddhist meditation practices and to studying Buddhist thought. This deeper interest in Buddhism is reflected in her writings as more emphasis is put on love and compassion. There also emerged more discussion on the compatibility of democracy and Buddhism and the ability of gaining freedom from an authoritarian government through Buddhism. Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. The decision of the Nobel Committee mentions the Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 1991 to Aung San Suu Kyi of Myanmar, Burma, for her non-violent struggle for democracy and human rights. Suu Kyi's struggle is one of the most extraordinary examples of civil courage in Asia in recent decades. She has become an important symbol in the struggle against oppression. In awarding the Nobel Peace Prize for 1991 to Aung San Suu Kyi, the Norwegian Nobel Committee wishes to honor this woman for her unflagging efforts and to show its support for the many people throughout the world who are striving to attain democracy, human rights and ethnic conciliation by peaceful means. Aung San Suu Kyi was placed under house arrest for a total of 15 years over a 21-year period, on numerous occasions, since she began her political career, during which time she was prevented from meeting her party supporters and international visitors. In an interview, she said that while under house arrest she spent her time reading philosophy, politics and biographies that her husband had sent her. She also passed the time playing the piano, and was occasionally allowed visits from foreign diplomats as well as from her personal physician. Although under house arrest, Aung San Suu Kyi was granted permission to leave Burma under the condition that she never return, which she refused. As a mother, the greater sacrifice was giving up my sons, but I was always aware of the fact that others had given up more than me. I never forget that my colleagues who are in prison suffer not only physically, but mentally for their families who have no security outside in the larger prison of Burma under authoritarian rule. Her loyalty to the people of Burma and her solidarity with those imprisoned for their pro-democratic acts have earned her deep respect among the Burmese people. A brief calendar of Suu Kyi under house arrest is as follows. 
the 20th of July 1989, placed under house arrest in Rangoon under martial law that allows for detention without charge or trial for three years. The 10th of July 1995, released from house arrest. The 23rd of September 2000, placed under house arrest. The 6th of May 2002, released after 19 months. The 30th of May 2003, arrested following the Depayne massacre, she was held in secret detention for more than three months before being returned to house arrest. The 25th of May 2007, house arrest extended by one year despite a direct appeal from UN Secretary General Kofi Annan to General Van Shu. The 24th of October 2007, reached 12 years under house arrest, solidarity protests held at 12 cities around the world. The 27th of May 2008, house arrest extended for another year, which is illegal under both international law and Burma's own law. The 11th of August 2009, House arrest extended for 18 more months because of violation arising from the May 2009 trespass incident. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.